I want to try and feel this point down to the ground. The more down to the ground, the more the club will tend to go back in a straighter line and more closed. Starting the swing correctly is essential if you want an orthodox golf swing with no compensation. If you started poorly but compensate brilliantly, brilliantly, obviously you can play great golf. What I'm trying to do really with this video and a lot of my videos is make you become more solid, more consistent and understand things a bit better, hopefully. So today we're really looking at how we should start the swing better with the main focus being on our lead arm. So lots of golfers for me get this wrong. Try and make sure you're not one of them. So when they take the club back, if you look at this sweat band with a T-peg poking through it, this will point upwards or a worse horizontally. And what that causes, if you look at the club, the club will roll inside, it'll increase the loft, and you're basically off plane, out of direction, straight away. I really want to focus on how we can change that just simply using this simple sweat band and tee and really get you to focus on getting the club in what I would class as a stronger position, but also in a better direction, you know, at the get-go to allow the rest of the swing to just naturally flow. So quite simply, I've got this sweat band just below my elbow. And I've got the T-peg as I hold my arm straight, pointing pretty much at the target. What I want to do then is as I take my backswing, I want to try and feel this points down to the ground. The more down to the ground, the more the club will tend to go back in a straighter line and more closed. So I often use the words, feed what you need. If you're the guy that's really in here, then you want to really point this down towards the ground as quickly as you can. So we're making the arm basically do this as opposed to doing that. So quite a lot of golfers have too much rotation in the start of the swing in this arm and in this wrist. And that leads to issues cupping the wrist later on in the swing, plane changing, and all those kinds of things. So really what we're looking for to do is try and keep this pointing down to the ground and this wrist not to change its positions too. If you wanted to, you could put a T in there also and try and get those T's pretty much matched up to each other. That would help the wrist as well if the arm's not the one that's misbehaving. So quite simply, the drill is point the T-peg to the ground as we start the swing. As we get up to our chest high, the T-peg then will point more up to the sky. You might want to focus just on the initial part to get that right and then naturally see how you look at the top. But again, at the top, then if that leads you to feeling cross line and over here, then you can start to add that secondary pronation of the arm into the second part of the backswing. So, take my setup here, point it down. My advice would be to do some slow rehearsals and then some slow motion hitting and then build it up to full speed. But if you're the roller in the takeaway, which I see most golfers do, then this is a great drill to focus on one small section of your swing that could have a huge effect on later movements in the golf swing to allow your swing plane and your club face to be better. When we roll it, you'll see there the club face, how it points off at this angle. So club face is square in the back swing will be pretty much parallel to a spine at this stage. Obviously we see lots of golfers with this. In doing that, we're adding lots of loft. We're making the club weaker. You can hit slice shots, you can hit high shots. We don't particularly want that. We want to hit these penetrating, long, strong shots. So getting this club face in a stronger position is a definite must, particularly if you're a slicer of the golf ball or afraid of the golf ball and you don't want to be afraid of the golf ball. So getting that club face in a stronger position and getting these arm and wrist structures correct is going to 